Hi, I'm James Brown and I'm the Creative Director of Pattern Designers. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how I became a textile designer. If you'd like to stay till the end, you can get a free textile design cheat sheet. How I started. So how did I start out? Um, I was always into drawing, always into art, drawing, drawing, drawing as a kid. Um, so through school, loved art, loved geography and maths as well. Um, but art was my best subject. Um, I went on to college, 16 to 18, did a BTEC National in Art and Design in the UK. I'm currently, a little background, I currently live in Australia, but I'm originally from the UK. So did this BTEC National in Art and Design, covered a, like a range of subjects in art, um, so architecture, kind of woodwork design, pottery, um, surface pattern design, illustration, photography, a little bit of everything. And looking back, I was actually, we did a section in pattern textile design and I was really good at it. And I can't believe that it was missed. Like in college, if they would have, at, at the point where I was deciding to go to university, if they would have said, oh, you can be a textile designer and do this kind of illustration, but in repeat patterns and, um, and placement prints, for textiles to go on garments, I probably would have gone, yeah, I, I would love to do that. So it's a bit of a shame it wasn't pointed out there. Anyway, I went on from college to do a degree in illustration. Um, that started out on, on the first three, six weeks, you did two weeks of photography, two weeks of illustration, two weeks of typography. And I, I went to university to do illustration. I knew I was gonna do illustration, so um, did that completed the course, got a degree, and the only thing missing from my university course was kind of the key of how to get work in illustration, how to get a job in illustration, how to get freelance work in illustration. That was missing from my course. Like These days they probably give you a lot more insight in how to get work as an illustrator and you probably, the, the courses will probably cross, cross over a lot more into graphic design, illustration, because they're kind of merged, they're kind of merged now. So that's how I started off. So if I was going back to the beginning, 16, I would probably, these days, I would probably head over to YouTube, find as much information in the types of art you want to learn, specifically for textile design. Um, there's not tons out there, but there is. It is out there. Um, go head over to Skillshare, do as many online courses as possible. Maybe do a part-time job while I'm learning this from 16 to 18, and then 18 have a portfolio ready, ready to hit the market and go out there, get a tech job in textile design, get some freelance work in textile design, and just do it that way. So you haven't got that three years waiting to do you to finish a course and like a, a university course and it's, I'm not saying university is a wasted amount of time but if your goal is to get a job in art in textile design or illustration the faster the better so the, the more you learn the quicker you learn and the quicker you can do things the faster you're going to get a job my freelance illustration career so out of uni um, my mum bought me a, a brand new apple mac a tower g3 old school in the year 2000 and i then learned how to use photoshop how to use illustrator and how to do graphic design i then used the graphic design work that i produced in about three months to get a job in graphic design at a newspaper had this job for about a year then I got made redundant and decided I wanted to focus on illustration and a career in freelance illustration because I'd done it at university I wanted to use my degree to the best of my potential so I did um, I headed towards kind of editorial illustration book publishing and advertising because I knew that that's where the main bulk of illustration work was and I did okay. I didn't do super awesomely. I had a. I like. I was constantly working from style to style, and 
um, doing different styles, combining Illustrator with hand drawn, and because I started off doing more hand drawn work, and then kind of graduated into Illustrator because it was just faster to get work to the clients, and um, and more efficient. So you don't have to rub stuff out; you can just change it within a few clicks. I used to use a mouse, now I use a Wacom. Um, so that's where I started um, as a freelance illustrator and I'd say a lot, the main bulk of my career has been learning new techniques, new techniques in illustration and new techniques in how to sell my work, how to do graphic design, how to build websites, how to build promotional material. I taught myself a lot and I'd say that to, to you guys out there, learn as much as you possibly can because that's where you'll how you'll get to where you want to get to. My transition into textile design. In 2011, I met a girl called Millie Blunt. Um, she was working for Carolina York. Well, I just finished working for Carolina York um, print studio in Sydney. And she was setting up her own textile design studio. Um, she now runs Camilla Francis Prints, where they're based in London and they're doing very well. Um, so, while she was setting up her studio over here in Australia, she took three weeks out to teach me how a textile design studio runs. And so I learned a lot of tips and tricks of, of what the nuts and bolts are to run a textile design studio in 2011. Um, how to do repeats, how to make good flow in prints, how to use colour, trend, mood boards to produce a collection of artwork, um, how to sell to clients, how to present to clients, how to present at Premier Vision. So I learned a lot from her and thanks Millie because you taught me a lot. Um, I wouldn't be doing the career I do today without your help. My textile design studio. I said I want to run a textile design studio and seriously dedicated all of my time to being a textile designer and running a textile design studio. So producing prints every day, getting trend boards and working from trend only and producing a collection of artwork to sell to clients. Um, from there I started presenting my work to clients. I didn't get my work printed on um, silk um, because I couldn't afford to so just started selling via online email and calls and phone calls and got a bit of work out of it, got consistent work out of it, um, Nana Judy, Cotton On, Target, um, Big Bok, Sleep Maker, Mattresses is a bit of a weird one, I really enjoyed doing that work though. Um, and so yeah, ran a studio for quite a few years. Working full time as a textile designer. Working full time um, as a textile designer is awesome, I've got to say. So working as a freelancer, working full time. I much prefer working full time. Um, gives me that consistency of income. I'm not always hunting for work. So I get to produce artwork day in, day out. Um, get it signed off and it goes on garments. Um, I currently design for one to seven boys wear for an Australian retailer. Um, they have approximately 320 stores Australia wide. Um, the garments I produce for are kind of shirts, t-shirts, board shorts, shorts, jackets. Each quarter has three themes to work to. Um, and then, so each theme we work to, we produce the, the consistency in, in boys wear is dino prints, shark prints, trucks and cars. Um, they're the key big sellers. They're the, the key, there's also key colors um, that we work to um, that are consistently in stores. Um, I work with a designer and a buyer and the design manager. Um, the buyer buys the product that we chooses how many units of each product that they're going to buy. The designer designs the garment and places the design on my graphic design on the garment. Um, in general, we have to 
so one to two thousand units per week in general we order ten to thirty thousand product like units of one product so I have one dyno t-shirt it gets printed on ten to twenty thousand that ten to twenty thousand generally needs to sell one to two thousand per week and needs to sell out within 12 weeks or 10 to 12 weeks so that the product doesn't have to get marked down and stuff that you don't learn as a freelancer you don't learn about that sales and units and how many how many units your artwork is going on which is really it's a really great insight to have um, because it's real it's not it's it's super real you don't as a freelancer you do your artwork hand it to the client they tick it or they say oh, I want this amended I want these colors amended mended and you do that and then you sign it off and you see in you see in store you'll see it online but you don't get those those unit sales the unit sales is really important because you base the current design so my current designs that I design they're based on last year's sales as well so they're based on color um, attributes like is it a dyno, is it a shark, is it a truck um, those sold 1500 units for 10 weeks flat we're gonna do one of those this year but reinvent it um, renew it um, do a new version so you know that based on those previous year sales that you've got a winner because it sold so much last year you just gotta you just gotta re you just gotta look at it from another perspective and produce fresh new artwork that's in line with trend but it's gonna sell the units as well um, love it love full-time work so now you know how I became a textile designer if you want to learn some more I have a free textile design cheat sheet in the description please subscribe to my channel and like this video share it on Facebook share it on you can't share it on Instagram but share it where you want to be nice um, I'll see you in the next video